For many watching, now is a time of giving thanks, and one of the things I am most thankful for is the emergence of additional tools that promote self-sovereignty. Of course, Bitcoin is the crown jewel, but it cannot and should not stop there, and that is why I am so excited to be covering in today's video the long-awaited Impervious Browser, which brings a suite of peer-to-peer -peer tools and apps built on the Bitcoin Lightning Network. Let's jump in. Welcome back to another video. My name is Ian Major. I'm an entrepreneur, Bitcoin Pleb, and all around raging capitalist. And as mentioned, this is one of the most highly anticipated videos that I have done. So today we're going to start off with a brief recap of what this is, what are the key components, and then we're going to take a real live look into the impervious browser. There will be some things we don't cover, so we're going to keep this pretty high level because there are some pieces that are still being fully ironed out on the impervious side, including things like supporting Tor connections. And so we will talk through some of that, but it is really exciting stuff. You are not going to want to miss a thing. For those returning to the channel, welcome back, my friends, as always. It is a pleasure to have you. And for those new to the channel, I welcome you as well. If you like this type of content, I invite you to consider subscribing and join us in our growing merry gang in cyberspace. I cover all manner of Bitcoin related content, including how to secure your Bitcoin, acquire it, privacy best practices, other self sovereignty tools such as today. You want it, I cover it. That is how this works. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into a brief recap of what Impervious is and what we can expect to see. All right, so I actually did a video quite some time ago that I will link if you are curious to check it out, but this was right when Impervious was really announcing some of the underlying pieces of code that would form the different apps that are being combined into the Impervious browser. So Impervious actually made a lot of this available quite some time ago, but it wasn't until now that we had this nice wrapper of this browser that sort of combined all the greatest pieces of what they had developed. And as I talked about in that older video, the whole premise here is really about thinking through what is layer three, right? If the Lightning Network is layer two, what are some of the things and apps that we can build on top of that? And this is critical because self-sovereignty absolutely extends beyond money. Money is certainly the most important element, but think about your digital identity. Today, maybe you use a Gmail account, which Google owns, right? They own that identity. You know, maybe you have an Instagram account, right? Faith, you know, Meta owns that identity. Think about your data, right? It's just an all out orgy out there. Your data is being scraped, pieced together, sold all the time. And especially with government surveillance increasing, it is vital that we consider self sovereignty along not just money, but also data, identity digital communications, and more. And so if we take a look, Impervious Browser is really a suite of peer-to-peer -peer tools for communication, data transport, and payments with real-time end-to-end encrypted messaging and file sharing. As we will see, you can do secure group video calls. Uh, you even have the ability to stream sats during that, which is very, very cool. But I think this will really help connect the dots for some folks in terms of Bitcoin being natively digital, right? This is built directly into the browser here. You also have collaborative real-time uh, docs that are shared only between peers that you're collaborating with. Uh, and you know all of that is stored locally. And then you also have DIDs or decentralized IDs to control your identity, designate how you wanna share data, Etc. And so all of this has been wrapped up into an open source privacy first browser. So there's no data collection happening for users. You can inspect the code on GitHub if you want. And excitingly, this becomes the world's first Bitcoin Lightning native web browser. As we will see, you can connect a Lightning node to leverage the Lightning network, not just for payments, but also optionally for routing messaging data over the Lightning Network itself. To enable a lot of this, they've developed what they call their Decentralized Messaging Communications or DIDCOM system, which uses both Pure Relays and the Lightning Network. This is really, really important because again, this helps improve censorship and surveillance resistance for data transfer itself. within that DIDCOM system, which again is also open source, there are a couple different data transport methods supported, including the common ones like HTTP, 
uh, gRPC, WebRTC, but then you also have, again, Lightning Network as this data transport method. Now, I am not technical enough to comment on the merits or pros and cons of using Lightning in that fashion. I am sure there are trade-offs, but it is an interesting option at least to have. And so as Impervious likes to say, you know, this is Google Docs without Google. This is Zoom without Zoom, right? So on and so forth. So really, really exciting stuff. I think this only begins to scratch the surface in terms of what is possible with these peer-to-peer -peer apps built on top of Lightning. And it's not just Lightning, it's also using important identity primitives such as DIDs or decentralized identifiers, right? That is not specific at all to Lightning Network. In fact, I have covered a whole video on what Jack Dorsey and TBD have called Web5, which I think is a really critical complement to this. So I'd encourage you to check that out as well. Let's go ahead now and jump in and actually take a look at what this looks like. All right, so here we are at impervious.ai. I will, of course, link this in the description down below. And if we go to download impervious browser, we will see there are a couple different download options. You have a couple for Mac, uh, one for Linux, and for us, the, the laggards of the group, we will download for Windows. And so we have got our executable here. I have looked a little bit in their Discord and Twitter and have not found people talking about verifying the download. I know you can build it from source. Uh, all of this is open source, of course, but that would be nice to have a process to verify the download as we typically do with anything that we're downloading from the internet. But let's, uh, let's forge ahead nonetheless. And so we'll open up the executable. All right, fantastic. So as we can see, we have got our impervious browser running locally. Love to see it. And so as you can see, it sort of works similarly to how you can create new keys or recover uh, existing ones. And so in our case, we're gonna go to new user and it's gonna ask us to create a password. As it says, this will be used to lock and unlock your browser's local database. So this is very important save a copy of your password in a safe place. Pervious cannot help you recover this password because they will not know it. If this is lost, you'll need to perform a reset and restore with the identity recovery kit, which we will discuss. We'll go ahead and hit set password. All right, and then it is automatically prompting us to save what is called our recovery kit. And so this is necessary to recover your decentralized identity, right? That's one of the whole points of this. You know, it's not a Gmail address that, you know, Google owns. This is your identity identity. So we'll go ahead and save this in our downloads and we will say we've backed up the identity recovery kit. All right. And so here we can see the very clean setup. We've got our dashboard with a number of different options. So as I mentioned, today we're primarily focusing on a pretty high level tour and some of the key kind of setup steps and then we'll definitely you know, go into more detail in future videos. So first and foremost, given that these are a suite of peer-to-peer -peer tools, of course the first step is going to be establishing those peers. And so if we look at the top right, we have a number of tools on how to do that. So let's say that I wanted to share my identifier with someone else, I could copy this did. And so if you pasted that in, you'll see it's a very long form string that is your decentralized identifier. And so you could share that with someone else and they could add you as a contact. Or if you wanted to add someone else as a contact, they would send that to you and you could go here and add and paste in that long form did, tag it with a name and boom, there you go. You now have a peer that you can interact with in the various peer-to-peer -peer apps uh, that we will look at in just a moment. You've also got this share button, which just allows you to promote Pervious if you want. You can post on different uh, social media. And then interestingly, you have this Twitter connect button. So what this does is it links your decentralized ID to Twitter, and then you're basically using that as a kind of did lookup or registry, right? So that would allow you to more easily find other contacts and connect with them versus having to kind of one by one, you know, paste in all the long form dids. So it basically serves as a kind of handy lookup. Now, if you don't want to do that, that's totally fine. You can just do the more manual route of pasting in each of those long form dids and adding contacts that way. So that's how you add contacts. And then as you go through and do different activities, you will see uh, those different pieces 
displayed in this kind of central area. And then as we can see, we've got a couple quick actions so we could uh, meet with someone, right? It's gonna ask for access to our camera and microphone. And as you can see, you know, it's pretty similar. It looks like Zoom, right? We had contacts, we could invite them to connect. We can chat, we can share screens, and you can even stream and send sats. And so it says connect to a lightning node to use this action, which we will come back to. Come back to our dashboard. We can do the same thing with messaging. And so again, works as you would expect. You had contacts, you would select the contact and then you can message back and forth. You can even send files over chat, which is very, very cool. You also of course have the live docs. So you can create a document and invite collaborators, as you can see on the right, to collaborate in real time on different documents. We can manage our contacts. We've got some settings. And in these settings, we've got a couple key pieces. So first you have your relay. This is a default default impervious relay that you're using. Relay is basically helping pass messages back and forth. You can create a new relay if you would like. And so we do want to go ahead and just hit register and we're registered with the relay, so that is all fine. And then we've got the lightning node. So this is where you can update lightning settings. If you don't already have a lightning node, Impervious does support creating a voltage lightning node, uh, which is nice. So this will instruct you how to grab an API key to then put that in. So that is one option. But then the other is if you're already running a lightning node, this is where you would come. You would come to import a lightning node. Now, I'm not going to do this just yet today because there are some connectivity pieces that are still being worked out. So for example, Impervious Browser actually does not yet support connections over Tor, which for a lot of folks that have set up an Umbral node and other node implementations kind of by default use that. So what you would need to do now, if you wanted to set up your Umbral node, for example, is to run a hybrid, i.e. a node that connects not just over Tor, but also over ClearNet. I don't want to do that, so I am going to wait for Impervious to support connections over Tor, and then I will come back in a future video and show how to do this. But there is this handy tweet thread that I will link in the description down below if you want to go ahead and do some of this. One word of caution if you are running everything on Windows is that the XXD command that you will see in the tweet thread is a Linux command. So that is not gonna run in your Windows PowerShell, for example, and so you will need to download some extra stuff. I think there are services out there that do the translation into the hex strings that you will need to import for your TLS certification and your macaroon. So again, both of these elements are just pieces that are necessary for remotely connecting to your Lightning node. Again, I'll talk through all of these pieces in more detail once we have support for connections over Tor. That is where you would go to do it. We've also got two other sections in our settings. You can manage your identity, so you could give yourself a little nickname that is connected to your decentralized ID. I can see my long form did that once again, I can copy from this button at the top and share with my connections and so on and so forth. And then for now, there is this uh, open messaging setting where you can, if it's set to open, you will receive messages from any contact. And if you turn that off, you can only receive it from saved contacts. You finally then have the wallet feature on the left here, as well as this toggle for lightning. Now, both of these will be disabled as we can see until we actually connect a lightning node. And similarly, if I come back to the dashboard, the lightning quick action, which would go to my lightning wallet is also going to be disabled until we configure a lightning node. But once we were to do that, the wallet is as you would expect, the ability to send and receive sats over lightning directly native within the browser, which is very cool. And then as we saw, you would also be able to do things like stream sats back and forth in those video meetings. And then this toggle at the bottom left will turn lightning transport on. So that means you are then using the Lightning Network to transfer messages. And again, if you don't use that, you'll be using one of the other methods, whether it's uh, gRPC, WebRTC, HTTP. But there you have it, pretty clean setup, super impressive. There is so much sort of behind the hood, but they have abstracted away a lot of that complexity. I do think at this early stage, it is a little bit challenging to get your Lightning Node connected, particularly given the prevalence of Tor only 
node setups, but I know the Impervious team is working on that. And so we will certainly be doing future videos where we go more into depth. But with all that, let's go ahead and conclude today's video. All right, so there you have it. Again, very impressed. This has been a long time coming. Impervious talked a very big game for a very long time, but they have now backed that up and delivered something truly special. Now, again, as we discussed, there are still some things that need to be ironed out, including the ability to accept connections over Tor. I think that will unlock a lot of folks who are running tour only lightning nodes to be able to connect their node but it is crazy the amount of stuff that is already out there and again keep in mind you know if you're a developer interested in any of this stuff all the code is open source for both the browser and the didcom infrastructure so right you can build on top of this in whatever way you see fit i'm definitely going to do future videos where we connect our lightning node show the different lightning related functionality as well as maybe do some actual live messaging with actual contacts but as you could probably tell i'm pretty hype about this but i am curious to hear your thoughts what do you think is this the beginning of a truly peer-to-peer -peer digital world or are there big pieces even missing still let me know your thoughts in the comments down below but i hope you found this valuable and insightful if you did you already know what to do give this video a like Use the share feature underneath the video that really does help get this to more individuals. And I think these are the types of tools that are critical to arm everyone with as we combat these looming forces of surveillance that only seem to be growing over time. And if you are so enamored by this content and you wanna to donate to a pleb, which really helps me continue to make these videos, you will find my lightning address and strike account on the very final page, which you will see momentarily. But for now, we'll go ahead and leave this here as a reminder, every sat counts. And until next time, I'll see you then.